Good evening, sir. So as all participants are joining, we will start in one minute. Good evening all, respected chief guests, distinguished dignitaries, and my dear friends. This is Sakshi Devedi, your host of the evening, would like to welcome you all on the second day of 15 days international training program. I warmly welcome your, our guest of honor and speaker of today's session, Dr. Sanjay Swami, professor in soil science and agriculture chemistry at Central Agriculture University, Impart. Dr. DPS Badwal, organizing director committee members, and most importantly, all the participants on the 15-day virtual international training program on advances in agripreneurship and skill development for reshaping future of India agriculture jointly organized by Agro-Environmental Education and Farmers Welfare Society and Just Agriculture e-magazine. In today's era, even after having sufficient resources, Rural people migrate in order to earn and survive. Is it what rural India looks like? The answer would always be a no. So what are the opportunities are there for rural people? How they can formulate the strategy in order to maximize the profit with the minimum investment and maximum utilization of resources? To understand answer of such question, I would like to welcome Professor Dr. Sanjay Swami, sir, who is an active researcher in the field of conservation and management of natural resources and contributed over 100 research papers and technical articles in various journals, periodicals of international repute. Sir is SCSI Leadership Gold Medal Awardee, Young Scientist Awardee, and these are just few of them. This is not just India. Because of his excellency in his respective domain, the president of India and the visitor of Manipur University nominated him as a member of the fifth court of Manipur University. Sir is actively serving as the chairman of Meghalaya State Chapter of Soil Conservation Society of India and member of the International Advisory Council of the Grassroots Institute, Montreal, Canada. Now, I would request sir to enlighten us with your lecture on the most important topic of today's era, that is agripreneurship opportunities for attracting rural youth in agriculture. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Sakshi, for uh, introducing me nicely. Uh, actually, your uh, introduction uh, with the participant that is creating much pressure on me to justify today's topic. Although I am a soil scientist, uh, but uh, the topic given is me on uh, is on entrepreneurship that uh, I will try my best to justify the topic. So first of, all, first of all, very good evening to all of the participants present on this platform today. Uh, very efficient uh, team members of Just Agriculture and other dignitaries. I, at the outset, I welcome all of you here in this uh, 15 days long international training program. Uh, of course, uh, 
it is a very you can say it is very important training program because the team of just agriculture they have put their lot of efforts in bringing all the academia and industry people together so that uh, you can learn the practical experiences as well as theory definitely the faculty persons will explain the theory part very efficiently but until or unless you are exposed to the real world what is happening uh, you will learn the real world experience that how to succeed for a startup then only uh, the person will get full exposure and for that that i congratulate the team of just agriculture for taking pen setting default and uh, of course uh, i feel honored to be associated with this program because uh, since the inception of this program i am fully uh, you can say the associated uh, and uh, today it is the education part and uh, uh, second day of this training program so i hope that uh, even in the coming days uh, you will get a very interesting topic that will boost your moral to be a good entrepreneur so uh, without uh, taking much time uh, let me come to the topic and uh, for that uh, i am sharing my screen is it clear yes sir it is visible okay uh, so as i told you that uh, the topic assigned to me is agripreneurship opportunities for attracting rural youth in agriculture friends uh, it is true that today the is not willing to uh, even engage his son or daughter in the farming business because there are certain reasons that uh, i will take up uh, one by one so the thing is that what the agripreneurship opportunities are available particularly for the rural youth there are so many opportunities but the youth or the rural farmers they are not able to catch the right thing right entrepreneurship because of the unawareness so that's why here i am trying my best to uh, give a glimpses that what type of uh, opportunities are available particularly in the rural area and what type of uh, uh, ventures one can start so first you see uh, if we see the indian scenario right now we are around 1. to 7 billion population and uh, by 2050 we will be exposed to 1.65 billion it means population pressure is increasing day by day then coming to our food grade requirements right now we need uh, less but by 2050 we will need around 377 million ton and for that we have to increase our productivity we have to uh, produce more likewise if we see the net cultivable area by 2050 what we are having right now it is almost equivalent right now it is uh, around 135 or 37 and by 2050 we will have only 145 million hectare net cultivable area that means we are not going to extend our area for cultivation purpose and because the expansion is not possible that indicates that we have to produce more food for feeding the growing population with the limited resources and for that we have to utilize 
our resources in very efficient way very precociously precociously and out of that resources if you see the human resource this is the most important thing and within this human resource the youth it is you can say the very very important share of the population because youth are very enthusiastic they are very vibrant they can catch very innovative ideas and they are even dynamic in nature yes they have the strong passion they have the motivation and they have the will power if the youth of any country if you can say have no lives then we can say that country will definitely progress now if you see the definition of work youth what actually you see the united nations they adopted the age group that from 15 to 24 age is under youth whereas in case of our national youth facility policy initially in 2003 they defined the age group 13 to 35 as youth but later on in 2014 they refined it and now they consider as 15 to 29 years age as the youth but no matter if we roughly take it is 13 to 35 years age which we consider as youth and uh, very interesting thing i i am going to say you that india is the only country which is having the largest share of youth population throughout the globe see china is having more population than india but if we see the percentage of youth we are having more number of youth more population of youth in our country that is around 242 million whereas china is having only 185 million young people they they, they are having more people in the old age and one more interesting thing that india is remain india will remain younger longer than the indonesia and china which are the other two most important countries which determine the demographic features of asia if we see the asian context there are only two populated countries china and indonesia apart from this uh, india and the trend if you see india will remain longer duration younger right now if you see we, we are having almost 35% share of our youth population and now see this youth as i told you that farmers are even not interested their uh, children to do farming why this need is coming to attract the youth in the agriculture why they are living i have tried to list few reasons and first and foremost is farmers low identity and self you all know that farmers they are having very you can say low identity and image everyone thinks that farmers they are very poor they wear torn clothes they are uh, used to means work in soil okay so this type of image even if you see the story always we, we listen that there was a poor farmer we never listen that there was a poor mahajan or baniya so that is the image created by society that farmers they have the low identity they have the no image that's why one want to means create self image and they want to means uh, live this process second thing is that farming is not a profitable job it is not like this yes but what we considered earlier that farming is just to feed the family not a 
business that's why what the farmers do they just uh, cultivate the land and they run their family affairs that's all if you see the earlier program in particular my reason uh, i listen there is a program that for farmers that uh, i am saying in hindi that dab ke ba tarz ke kha that means work hard so more harvest good and eat good but now these things are changing we can say that dimag ke ba and raj ke kama it means we have to use our brain in agriculture and we have to go for earning good income so this is the tens is time then the next uh, important thing is an inadequate skills and knowledge on all these agriculture you can say process that production processing and of course marketing yes we are lacking our youth they are not having much knowledge they are not having much skill that how to produce what to produce and how to add value and how to market they are not even knowing about the value chain management that's why we are facing failure in agriculture then uh, there are few more reasons that uh, uh, like this uh, lack of rural infrastructure yes definitely because of the policies of government we are not having good infrastructure in rural areas particularly road facility electricity facility storage facility for food grain like this yes then lack of supportive government policies and program for poor farmers yes whatever the government are coming they consider this as the soft target and uh, they are not uh, much you can say the uh, interested about this group and uh, they are not framing very good policies that can benefit the farmer but now the uh, attitude is changing and uh, the government is framing very good policies for the benefit of farmer and the most important and last one is lack of organization of young farmers yes we are not having very good organizations we are not having such many good self help groups we are not having uh, any you can say the business mind farmers group that can create a, a good image for them throughout so the issue of the reasons that our youth they are not interested in agriculture now if we see the scenario of our different community government and different organization they always neglected this group they never realized that what our youth is needed what our youth youth needs what type of policy we have to provide what type of facility we have to provide and that's why we are unable to make full use of their energy and potential particularly in the agriculture se- sector and if we see the quote of uh, professor ms swaminathan who is the pioneer or the you can say the father of indian green revolution he even said that the youth can be attracted and retained in farming only if become economically rewarding and intellectually satisfying that means if we can create our agriculture economically rewarding that will financially benefit that will give monetary benefit to our youth and they will mentally satisfy yourself with this job then only we can attract and retain the youth in agriculture so uh, this is uh, what the demand of time <clears throat> and for this purpose indian council of agriculture research they realized the need and they have uh, uh, initiated some programs for farmers 
for our youth just to attract and retain in agriculture you see a very important uh, program is farmers first program here in this policy what the icr do is doing for every you can say the problem which farmer are facing we are keeping the farmer in centric role for identification of the problem then uh, out of those problems what problem we have to take first that we are prioritize priority the problem and then conducting the experiment and giving solution to the farmers so here first is also uh, not the uh, in the sense of uh, first that we are considering farmers uh, at the first point but it means farm innovation resource and science and technology that constitute the world first likewise uh, in you can say the bsc agriculture programs we have one student ready program and here again ready means rural entrepreneurship awareness development yojana and under this program uh, there are five components uh, just to uh, you can say the provide experiential learning uh, the rural awareness work experience and then training to the youth and ultimately we are putting uh, in the some projects so uh, all these assignments uh, they, they are just to uh, you can say the empower the youth with the skills that we need for today's uh, you can say time then uh, one program is maya motivating and attracting youth in agriculture as the name indicates uh, all the provisions all the efforts are just to motivate and attract the youth in agriculture likewise are you attracting attracting and retaining youth in agriculture here uh, yes we are motivating and attracting but we are not able to retain that what to do then uh, here in this initiative we are taking special efforts we are attracting we are training the youths towards this agri business enterprises and we are providing the training and for this in in a total at around 10000 rural youths are selected uh, 400 from each district in the plains and where we have thin population or in hilly areas 200 youths are being selected for this uh, uh, training uh, program and then ultimately after this training they are linked with the financing institutions they can take up the loan and start their uh, startups friends it is a very you can say misconception that uh, uh, in the rural areas we are having less entrepreneurship opportunities in real sense rural areas they are the places of opportunities there are unlimited potential and every type of you can say the enterprises that may be primary that may be secondary or that may be tertiary we can start there and we have seen during this covid-19 pandemic that the person the farmers who are just living in the nearby cities they are compelled to come back to their villages because cities they are not able to feed them they are not able to provide the uh, uh, you can say proper work during this pandemic but the villages have the potential only the thing is that we have to train our youth we have to provide good knowledge and skills and if we if we blend this knowledge with skills then we can choose any of the enterprises and we can succeed but definitely while making this choice we have to choose the right type and for that we have to first do this swot analysis what are the strengths what are the weakness what are the opportunities and what are the threats for the venture which we are going to adopt and if we judge the entrepreneurs 
the the venture based on our knowledge what skills we have our attitude what are the resources which are available and how we will take up this venture so uh, if we just keep all those things in mind definitely we can succeed in any type of startup or we can take up multi varied type of entrepreneurship but we have to mix our idea interest and that that should be a judicious mixture and here i have tried uh, to just uh, put some of the you can say the opportunities which one can take up for their uh, you can say the entrepreneurship uh, uh, venture and first is apiculture friends all you of you know that uh, honey it is produced from this uh, honey bee and that is that you know that it is uh, raising of honey bee apiculture it is the uh, most consumed natural you can say seed food material and why we are saying that it is a good venture because it is really a very profitable business it is not required any refrigeration facility because uh, honey is uh, you can say last long and apart from honey we can get honey wax that is used for making many cosmetics items cosmetic items and here i have taken one example of uh, that if we are going to set up 50 high b unit then these are the you can say the uh, prevailing rates which i have mentioned and based on that uh, here uh, i have mentioned the initial capital cost for uh, two honey bee species one is for serena and one is for melissa so for 50 bee colony i uh, i have calculated and it is coming around uh, 2 lakh 32500 for serena and for melifera it is coming around 3 lakh 65000 uh, that is for capital investment and uh, if we see the working expenses then uh, for serena it is coming around uh, 92300 and for melifera it is coming around 1 lakh 30000 there are different uh, you can say the expenses uh, i think it is not required to uh, go for each detail but in nut cell by serena by uh, reading of this serena we can earn around 70 71400 while for melifera farming we can uh, earn around 2 lakh 10500 this is the production details i have mentioned and uh, the cost already i have mentioned here based on that uh, the final earning is uh, calculated the next important uh, you can say the startup is uh, mushroom cultivation friends uh, all of you know that uh, it is a very uh, delicious very proteinous and uh, very you can say the important uh, uh, diet mushrooms you know that uh, it can be cultivated throughout the year so many farmers they are already doing but they are just uh, doing in a particular season they are not earning much but if really you want to uh, go for startup you have to cultivate uh, the mushroom round the year and for this for that here i have listed uh, different uh, species of mushroom with their co- common name and the requirement of a temperature for spawning and cropping that means the different species they require different temperature for spawning and cropping and best of that this is the uh, you can say one chart that how different species can be grown in different time of the year based on the temperature requirement see this agaric is by scott white button mushroom it can be grown from october november december january february likewise this bitorquis 
it can be grown from uh, february march april and september october november likewise uh, other species if you see only one month is left out that is june because the uh, temperature uh, uh, requirement that is extreme temperature we can't uh, just uh, produce the mushrooms otherwise throughout the year we can produce the mushrooms and definitely if we are going for this then we, we are going to get economic returns around the year and one can get the employment opportunity throughout the year we can utilize the resources throughout the year and we can provide nutritious you can say nutritious diet to the family member and that is also a uh, help in breaking the epidemic stress and disease etc uh, it is very simple thing if we are even not having any farm land then uh, one can go for this type of start up because uh, this mushroom cultivation does not require uh, much land and only three important steps are there spawning composting and cropping then only processing and marketing <clears throat> this is the tentative layout for a uh, 25 to 30 ton per annum capacity plant or the unit uh, that layout is already uh, here you can see that uh, a very less area is required okay these are the uh, some uh, steps that composting then uh, just the cropping and uh, the full bloom harvest of the mushroom you can grow then of course uh, you know that mushrooms they are having very uh, very much medicinal value particularly the shiitake mushroom that is uh, used in the uh, you can say the cancer treatment and uh, the all the particular mushrooms they are rich uh, in protein carbohydrate mineral vitamin b2 and this is the only vegetative source from where we can get vitamin d there is no other source the next uh, we can go for poultry farming uh, again uh, where there is a very uh, you can see the huge demand for poultry meat and uh, eggs and uh, in, even in poultry or uh, chicken duck turkey geese we can go for different type of poultry bird again it requires less capital less maintenance less cost less less space and it fetches very high profits in a very less time dual purpose there are some breeds like this one raja kadaknath they are very you can say hardy and dual purpose and if we go this type of center uh, definitely we are going to get uh, much more profit then uh, dairy farming again uh, a very good business already farmers are having uh, every farmer is having two three you can say cattle or buffalo but they are not in business mode and if you look up to just the production of uh, dairy products from uh, different states only you can say the mainland india some uh, few uh, states of the india they are producing much of the uh, dairy milk or uh, milk product but the regional distribution it is very skewed there are many states which are uh, producing very less so for particular those areas there is a good scope for uh, this dairy uh, venture okay again here we need uh, not much investment and uh, we can use different type of uh, value addition in the uh, product like this milk that can be converted in number of items that can be sold and of course whatever the cow dung or buffalo dung we are getting that can be utilized as a manure and <clears throat> if we do this uh, uh, by this good you can say the uh, mechanized dairy we are going to get good profit 
then coming to fish farming again it is a very good job and uh, uh, you can see the uh, example of sultan singh near this karnal uh, he is vegetarian uh, uh, in habit in food habit but he is uh, just uh, doing this fish farming uh, at large scale and i don't feel that uh, a single day is uh, going without the visitors and the international visitors are coming there uh, there are many uh, type of fish products also that can uh, be prepared and sold by value addition he has also opened one uh, shop for different uh, fish products uh, near to this karnal and in national highway uh, i think uh, the name is fish bite and the particularly the haryana or uh, delhi people they know that how he is means doing this great job so uh, uh, one can go for composite fish culture uh, in the composite fish culture uh, in the same pond or in the same water body we can grow different type of composite uh, fish culture different type of species uh, if i just uh, give an example the katla that uh, they, that is surface feeder that remain on the surface rohu is the uh, middle zone feeder and mirgal and con- common carp they are the bottom feeder at grass, grass carp or uh, as the name indicates they they feed on the weed, on the grasses so uh, different type of species we can uh, cultivate in the same pond in the same water body that will uh, enhance our the utilization of resources and increase the uh, production then again sericulture uh, you see there are different type of silk uh, that are being produced and the very high quality silk particularly in assam bunga silk uh, is uh, produced and that textile industry is uh, a very good industry so for that uh, if uh, we have the uh, uh, very suitable climatic conditions for sericulture we can wear the silk worm also and uh, go for this sericulture then protected cultivation uh, of course uh, uh, particularly for high value crops uh, like this uh, vegetable crops uh, or flower crop we can go for protected protected cultivation we have the we can manage the microclimate we can control the microclimate uh, partially fully or we can modify it to protect the adverse weather events <coughs> and by this uh, we can earn a good uh, you can say the earning then of course off season cultivation by just managing the uh, sowing time and uh, uh, protecting our crop with the different type of structure like this low tunnel structure high high tunnel structure we can grow here and uh, we can uh, set a good price uh, which we are not going to get in the main season then of course high value crops there are certain crops which definitely give some very good returns like blueberry strawberry uh, that, that particular uh, again i want to say here that are the uh, region specific also like this saffron we can go for kashmir we can uh, grow in sikkim also in north east india then the king chili it is uh, having high pungency and particularly in the north east region uh, they can grow then kiwi uh, in himachal then in arunachal pradesh so these are the crops which uh, it gives a high return and we can go for these particular crop then cut flowers also uh, it is a very good business uh, and uh, you see the huge demand for this different type of program marriage ceremony and other occasion we can grow cut rose chrysanthemum carnation anthurium these are uh, some of the examples and uh, by by raising the, uh, the flower by raising the flower we can earn lot of money then nursery bedding uh, yes uh, it is also a very good job because you see uh, many farmers uh, they are doing the farming okay on a small scale but they are not 
interested to grow the nursery because they need small quantity of seed and that is not available uh, particularly if seed you see the uh, quality seed they are coming in packing and they are costly so uh, there are registered nursery cultivation registered nursery units from there one can get the uh, quality nursery and they can raise uh, the main crop in their field so this is also a very good crop if we go for the vegetable particularly i have mentioned that this brinjal tomato it is giving this is a 1.3 1.08 and of course this nursery cultivation and seed production both the ventures they are very good and if very uh, you can say the required training is given to the youth they can adopt this uh, nursery cultivation practices then coming to the medicinal and aromatic plants everyone knows that we have the huge demand for this aromatic plant and particularly everyone has seen this uh, uh, during this pandemic time that that every product they are saying that uh, we are the immunity booster particularly and uh, medicinal plants like this aloe vera they are uh, used in different type of cosmetics different types of uh, you can say the products okay so the uh, <clears throat> like this aloe vera has been uh, uh, tulsi uh, muleti there are so many plants having this different therapeutic use and likewise we can go for uh, uh, this uh, uh, grasses particularly this citronella lemon grass so and we can sell the oil also at high price so that next uh, i am coming to the integrated farming system so uh, the uh, units the components which i have discussed separately if one is interesting and having good knowledge and skill they can plan a integrated farming system where all these units can be integrated together to yield more to produce more but again the same thing that we have to be sound in knowledge because if we are selecting the wrong component everything will fail and the selection of the component again it is based on the prevailing conditions what type of means market is there so uh, uh, we are having one uh, uh, you can say the city area okay and uh, where we are having hindu population or maybe even mohammedan also but we are going for pigri so that should not be a, uh, you can say the suitable selection because no one is going to buy but here in the northeast region northeast india if we go for pigri that will be definitely so sure sort that uh, we are going to get good return okay uh, so likewise what is the demand of market where we can sell our product what type of price we are going to fetch what type of environmental conditions are there how we can cultivate what type of uh, expenses we are going to means invest so all these factors they will decide the selection of component and because here we are growing all these components or the selected components together that will solve many problems first food security Because we are going to produce good food, the nutrition is quality. Here, because of different component, we are getting different products like pulses also, the dairy products also, the meat also, egg also, fish also, then certainly fruits also, vegetables also, and that that is continuously 
go throughout the year so at different time we are getting different type of produce which are giving different type of nutrients and of course if one is having at their unit their farm they are bringing to their family first before selling so in this way we are just securing the nutritional requirement of our family as well as the other family then financial security of course this is continuous process and due to having lots of uh, or you can say the variety of crops variety of it, we are going to get different produce and different time so uh, at this moment we are going to harvest pulse crop next month maybe we are selling uh, poultry maybe next month we are having a quantity of uh, dairy or dairy products so likewise throughout the years we are earning something and that is giving financial security to us that environmental security also because uh, in this system what actually we are doing we are nothing purchasing from outside almost all these things we are producing and the by products of one unit is being utilized as input for other see in for some uh, fodder crops that fodder crop is utilized for feeding the cattle okay from cattle we are getting milk milk product then of course we are getting farm yard manure and that farm yard manure is again going to the field for providing nutrition to the crops likewise the poultry litter that is going to be uh, drop in the water body and that is being utilized as feed for the fish so this is the cyclic process the by product of one unit is being utilized as input for the other so it is a you can say the total recycle of the inputs and we are uh, you can say the uh, um, what i can say that we, we are disturbing our environment very less then uh, there are certain benefits also that uh, it, it can promote agro industry that uh, because of the uh, recycling we are increasing input use efficiency and if we are increasing the input use efficiency we are minimizing the cost because we are not going to purchase anything from outside we are getting increased employment uh, because uh, around the year there is some work which is going on the farm on the field on the unit so uh, no family member or whatever we have engaged the labor that that are never you can say be free or they are getting employment then of course uh, fodder security for livestock because uh, uh, the uh, fodder crop is one of the major component in the system recycling recycling of the resources that's continuous income and energy saving all those things i have discussed then uh, coming to the next uh, you can say the very important startup uh, we can go for eco village or eco park this is very you can say the recent uh, uh, concept uh, where uh, we, we can convert even this uh, integrated farming system also as the eco village you see because of the uh, much pressure of work and the city culture everyone is uh, uh, just living the machine life and they want to spend some uh, some time that like some free time you can say with a very good place that will provide the uh, you can say the uh, good environment 
and happy moments to that and for that that uh, we can just create the natural habitat we can just uh, uh, create a place where they they really enjoy the location uh, the picture queue uh, you can say the uh, environment uh, picture queue place and uh, um, particularly uh, you can say uh, all the things are integrated here that uh, uh, that can uh, give a very good satisfaction to the human being so what actually we are doing here uh, uh, we are uh, just creating the rural environment in natural way where some rivers is flowing okay maybe some sand dunes are there some hilly hilly areas are there and there we are creating some good uh, good you can say uh, residence uh, just like this uh, uh, village some hut and we can have the boating rafts so there we can have some uh, uh, you can say the dancing program there we we can have some uh, you can say the uh, the uh, traditional foods there traditional uh, atari there some handicraft items there so all these things uh, if we are creating one can enjoy that place and that can uh, uh, earn a lot of the in- income this is just a glimpse that how Uh, the hut is being uh, made nearby this river and you see the uh, in the next picture that uh, this is the hut from outside looking at the uh, just like lake structure but inside uh, every every facility is there and uh, they have created one dining table just uh, just nearby the uh, river so that one can enjoy the natural environment uh, dance program is there some local food items is there so uh, that will uh, that will provide a, you can say the very uh, good uh, pleasing uh, at- atmosphere to the uh, village uh, to the uh, tourists then of course friends uh, this value farming it is also a very good concept and uh, really uh, what whatever we are doing if we are not going to add some value that is you can say the useless we can't can't earn much benefit because without this value addition <clears throat> so i have listed only two three products just to give the idea that uh, if we are selling the mushroom direct product maybe we are going to get very less price uh, 20 rupees for a small packet or maybe some higher price but if we are converting all the mushrooms in different types of products we are adding values values we are converting them to the pickles nuggets that cookies that soup powder ketchup candy powder papad then one thing we are ensuring that at this moment of surplus supply when we are supposed to get less price at the same moment if we are adding value and we are just preserving our material we are preserving our product we are packing nicely and we are selling that in the uh, you can say big city big market then definitely we can fetch a very good price likewise this honey we can prepare honey drink honey jam honey cakes wine vinegar there are different products for every commodity just uh, i i am mentioning two three likewise this fish you see what type of products uh, one can create fish bada fish cutlet fish takli fish sevaiya fish sauce fish dal fish pickle fish papad different type of products you you can take any commodity Uh, uh just an example for this pineapple if we are directly taking this uh, pineapple all it will cost 40 to 50 rupees but we can prepare pineapple juice we can prepare pineapple powder for every reason every commodity we can go for value addition you can take any one but definitely we have to process we have to add value then only 
we can get very good earnings. Then, friends, uh, uh, you know this organic farming is get getting momentum, and uh, because uh, the people nowadays they are more concerned about this uh, health, and uh, uh, of course this COVID-19 have proved that also that the people who are uh, working less, who are uh, you can say the uh, not physically so much active, and who are dependent on this fast food, they are the uh, you can say the most suffer from this pandemic. Whereas the rural people, farmers who are putting much labor in the farm work, or they are eating the fresh vegetables or local produce, they are the you can say the having advantage. They are not. Me, sir, sorry to interrupt you. We are running short of time. So, shall we proceed with discussion and question answer? Okay, let me. Uh, yes, yeah, sir. You so, are not uh, for that, uh, I'm saying that uh, let me finish a few slides. Yeah, yeah, sir. Sure. Okay. So, uh, you know, this organic uh, products, they are getting premium price. They are getting high price than the normal products. Even, uh, you can say, five, six times more price one can set. But for this uh, organic culture, we have to uh, cultivate uh, properly. We have to follow the principles of organic farming. Basically, there are four principles. I am not going in detail. and if we are following the organic standard, proper technology, and the certification process, then we have the good market where we can sell. There are many, many, you can say, big shops, malls where we can sell, and people are ready to give many fold price for the organic produce. So uh, we, we can produce that and sell that. Then the main thing is that why this organic farming is not getting momentum because we are lacking organic input and for that there is a lot of opportunity for the rural youths they can go for the input condition purple to this organic farming production system and for that one is vermicompost uh, i am just uh, giving one uh, simple simple glimpses that uh, it is very easy technique and of course by uh, this uh, action of earthworm we can get very good quality vermicompost within very salt spawn and particularly for vegetables for flowers uh, for fruit crops it is you can say the very good compost rich in plant nutrients micronutrients in hormones and even a very good growth boost here I have given the cost-benefit ratio also for uh, a smart unit that uh, you can see here. Likewise, we can also prepare vermi compost, uh, vermi bath, and we can spray uh, on the you can say the vegetables. That that is also a very good booster. You can see how much uh, the different type of uh, nutrient and the uh, uh, micronutrients and the uh, microbes. Uh, particularly is having so that uh, that can enhance the uh, production. Then biogas is slurry. Uh, yesterday, Dr. Uh, Rathod is was discussing that we are not having proper skills. Yes, we 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 are having a huge demand for biogas slurry, but we are not. Getting, there is no good entrepreneurship who can uh, uh, just. Uh, and uh, uh, supply the good quality biogas slurry, but definitely this is also one of the good, uh, you can say startup for the Google. Then Biosar, she has also discussed. This is nothing simply a you can say the uh, uh, by the pyrolysis product uh, process we can convert this uh, any type of organic material, whether it is uh, wheat biomass, whether it, whether it is uh, uh, this uh, crop. Uh, 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 refuse whether it is good chips 
whether it is manure, all types of things, the organic things we can convert in the biotar and uh, that that uh, may serve a very good purpose for uh, taking startup. And uh, this is the automatic, you can say the machine system uh, where the biotar we can prepare automatically and uh, throughout the country only we have this unit at uh, our place where we can feed around 300 to 400 kilogram biomass per hour and within the 15 minutes we can get this uh, biotar. Then again biofertilizers, uh, different type of nitrogenous, phosphorus uh, and, and its composed biofertilizers are there. One can adopt these uh, techniques to start up uh, the different types. Then again, Azola, uh, it is a very good, you can say, the free floating aquatic farm, which can be used uh, in the uh, paddy cultivation. Then we just uh, throw small quantity of the Azola. Uh, it can spread, uh, multiply, and spread uh, throughout the water surface that can track the weed infestation, that can track the evaporation of water, and it is having around 4 to 5 percent nitrogen that can be utilized even as cattle feed, and it is proved that uh, if we feed this uh, mixing of this azola in the feed, that can enhance the yield of the cattle. And uh, of course, if we are adding this azola to our vermicompost uh, unit, uh, ultimately we are getting good product, uh, which is high in the nitrogen. Then there are certain, you can say the bioformulations, formulations, liquid formulations uh, that are very good, uh, you can say the nutrient source. And uh, in that, Panskovia is uh, one of the very important uh, Anyone can prepare this uh, type of panfugazia, they can go for this startup. Very good, you can say, very good uh, product for the organic farming, where we can have a very good, uh, you can say, growth and very good quality produce. Uh, uh, from this, uh, these tables, you can uh, just assess how much this, uh, the microbial load it is having and how much of this NPK or the micronutrients is having. Then the next is biopesticide. We can prepare different type of, uh, you can say the pesticide, biopesticide from the uh, uh, different, uh, you can say plant or uh, uh, animal origin, particularly neem is the, uh, uh, you can say the famous name in this uh, context and uh, we can prepare different type of neem extract and other things just to track the pest attacks in the organic farming. Then under this soil health management scheme, at village level, we can uh, set up a soil testing laboratory. And here I have given what type of expenditure one can go, but one has to acquire the testing skill. And ultimately, they can provide the soil health card to the farmers. Then uh, definitely one, one of the important thing is this custom hiding uh, centers. Uh, front because uh, we have the very, you can say, the poor farmers which are working in the rural areas. They are not able to uh, uh, purchase every equipment uh, in, in at their oven. Uh, so uh, what what they do is we are able to provide uh, different you can say the uh, farming implements, farming machinery at the uh, different you can say the hiring basis. That that can be a very good uh, you can say start up like this power tiller, multi crop power thresher, you know our. Uh, repair, sprayer, then the different type of uh, repairing tools. If we have this type of center, we can uh, give all these equipment uh, on the payment basis. Uh, it is definitely a very good startup. So uh, I have listed uh, different type of schemes also, but uh, as uh, I have been informed that uh, we are running short with the time, so <laughs> I am just uh, uh, skipping all those things, just uh, I'm giving glimpses. There are many schemes uh, which uh, we can uh, then take benefit of these schemes uh, to uh, uh, start uh, different type of, uh, you can say, the uh, startups. So these are just, I am just uh, skipping, just you can uh, see the names of these schemes, the Stand Up India scheme, then this new brand innovation and entrepreneurship development schemes for 
different educational institute then this free shakti package for women entrepreneurs this, this is particularly for karnataka then uh, from this punjab national bank mahina udyan nidhi scheme then uh, from this dena bank dena shakti scheme then uh, from this union government pradhan mantri yojana mudra bank scheme then aspire scheme then rashtriya mahila kosh then agri clinics and uh, agri business center schemes then dairy entrepreneurship development scheme so these are the different schemes for different purpose uh, different uh, you can say the target beneficiaries and uh, according to the uh, uh, suitability one can go for these schemes and they can uh, have the assistance and uh, just to can initiate their startups so in that cell i i would like to conclude again that there are lot of scopes there are lot of potential in the rural areas Uh, only we have to select the right type of venture uh, uh, for which we need good knowledge good skill good determination and of course uh, good knowledge of uh, market that then we can succeed so uh, thank you very much thank you thank you sir thank you for such an informative session a session is incomplete without a discussion and a question because of time constraints we cannot take all the questions but here are the few of them uh, so sir uh, sajil kumar sharma was asking that with the keeping in mind that the profit margins are kept low in the beginning so which is a better a rural market or an urban market for startup to begin uh this is the, you can say the situation dependent okay uh if you are willing you can start off venture from particularly rural areas and when we have good uh, supply system then you can go to the cities also where you can fetch uh, even uh, more good prices because uh, for every product there are different uh, you can say mall big big hotel definitely they will uh, give you the good price in, in comparison to uh, rural areas but you can uh, just start up uh, with the rural area okay all right sir moving ahead with the second question sir is it true that livestock farming creates a huge footprint as by shruti saini yes definitely that is uh, true in the one sense but uh, if you see uh, if we uh, just uh, stick on these things okay then we can't even go for the organic farming okay in the long run uh, it is not like this okay sir so uh, sir the next question is what is the scope and market of bioflock fish farming asked by pawan bansal bio bio flock fish farming yes that is also a very good uh, you can say venture and uh, nowadays it is get, getting momentum and uh, one can start uh, uh, a good venture here uh, in uh, particularly the regions where uh, we have the good demand here in north east india also uh, many uh, new startups are, startups are coming in this uh, area Okay, so so moving ahead, um, how much capital is required for mushroom farming? As uh, as I have seen many questions on mushroom farming, so I would like to go ahead with this asked by Siddhesh Mehta, and yes, uh, how yes. to get its information about marketing? Okay, uh, see mushroom, uh, we are having very uh, you can say the less investment, and uh, uh, from fifty thousand to. 1.5 lakhs we can start uh, this venture very easily because we are not requiring much space only a small room we, you can get uh, spawn from somewhere else also uh, you have to be uh, prepared with the compost and then you can go for cropping and harvesting for marketing yes definitely there are uh, as i told that there are uh, 
big big hotels where uh, uh, different uh, international guests they are coming uh, there is always a huge demand for this uh, mushroom and their products you yeah, are right sir in uh, so there is a one question so what about hydroponics is it worth a uh, try or is it profitable keeping yes, now in consideration definitely it is a profitable venture but uh, it requires lot of skills because uh, all these uh, nutrients we are applying through the different channels different you can say the pipes and we are growing the uh, products so we need a lot of skills in this uh, but uh, one can go for this venture okay sir so sir one more question is there asked by jyotsana is pearl farming also a good option or which one of the farming gives more profit in hilly areas which farming which farming gives more profit in hilly areas okay if you see the particular hill situation we can't say that uh, or a particular uh, component is beneficial uh, in hill areas because we are having very small small uh, land holdings so that is also very tough terrain and undulating situation so there only the integrated farming system is feasible and uh, wherever you have the hilly areas you will find few of the uh, you can say the cattle then definitely uh, some poultry birds then maybe piggery some goats so uh, integrated farming system is only the feasible option for living the hills okay okay thank you so much sir for enlightening us with such an information and exposure in thank rural you so areas much, uh, sakshi so uh, at the end i would uh, like to thank uh, the organizing team of the technical sir particularly dr badwal dr bhadwaj then uh, Mr. Abhishek Dehal for giving me this opportunity to be here and to interact, interact with the uh, young minds. Uh, thank you again, Mom. Uh, thanks to all. Okay, thank you, sir. I hope all of them would inculcate it in the practical life and reap maximum out of it. The all the things you have suggested to the rural people, and it's really there is a really a scope of huge profit in the rural area. Thank you so much, sir. So uh, you can stop sharing your screen. Okay, no. thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay, so okay, so it's time to move ahead with the second session on the topic microbiome engineering, emerging strategies, and role in crop management. So, for the second session, I would like to welcome Paul of Andhra Pradesh, CEO of Shri Biotech Laboratories, India Private Limited, which is have. global tie ups with the repute and trusted organizations that allow us to be a more active on the worldwide basis which was the first of its kind in the private sector dr k r k reddy it wouldn't be for wrong if i will call him a visionary man he started his company in 1993 with an objective to develop safe and green alternatives to agrochemicals for crop nutrition and protection served the department of biotechnology under the government of india as a member of task force on biofertilizer and biopesticide he is president bioagri input producers association member of fiicci member of international advisory board and vice president industries of asian pgpr society for sustainable agriculture since its inception He is awarded with the best R and D, best MSME, best innovation, best industry, and lot more in the row. And these are just highlights. When it comes to strategies and management, he stands out of queue. So let us welcome this eminent personality to enlighten us with his worth. Over to you, sir. 
Thank you, Sakshi. Uh, may I share my screen? Yeah, sir, uh, you are visible. Are you able to see my screen? Yeah, sir, it is completely visible. Great. So good evening, everyone. So it looks like uh, more than 400 participants from, I think, whatever all seen on the screen. And uh, definitely you all heard a very exhaustive presentation by my previous speaker. And uh, my presentation will be a bit technical. And the title is, you know, uh, Microbiome Engineering, Emerging Strategies and uh, How They Improve Health the Crop Management. See, fundamentally, I will be addressing from the microbial side. And my previous speaker informed all of you about the biofertilizers, biopesticides, and uh, so many microorganisms, how they help the farming community, how these technologies can be converted into the businesses. So I will be presenting the same information in a different fashion, wherein these microbes can be converted into very innovative delivery systems. So before going into the technologies and the concepts, so what happened all these years, 50, 60 years of Indian agriculture, Maybe you can say the global agriculture. So today we know, so we are happy with the buff buffer stocks in the godowns from begging ball to reach this stage. But flip side is at what cost? So there are challenges, the problems and damages happen to the humanity. So because of urbanization, industrialization, and the green revolution, certainly we can say that. So what happened at our agriculture when we do very intensive agriculture? So soil eroded and sediment transport and deposit into the streams, on-site pollution from overuse of various kinds of chemicals, maybe inorganic chemicals or organic chemicals or fertilizers, pesticides, fungicides, rodenticides, weedicides, whatnot. We are just dumping on the soil. And at the same time, our farm, what is happening? So we are cutting the forests. And as I mentioned, because of industrialization, urbanization, we are converting arable land into the real estates or industries. That means we are losing the very productive soil and converting the forests. And desertification, salinization because of the accumulation of chemicals, organic compounds, toxins, and also the loss of valuable biodiversity. So the flip side is this, and the one side we are able to sustain ourselves, feeding our population growing population, and at the same time, other side of the coin, so there is a hazards, health hazards, environmental hazards are happening. So this is the time to balance, in tune with the feeding the growing populations, and there is a, an awareness across the globe towards safe food. And green practices, we're talking about organic farming, zero budget farming, natural farming, using of various kinds of uh, uh, natural resources, how to bring back life to the soil, how to bring back whatever all we lost from the soil because of intensive cultivation, and also how to grow food for the growing population that will reach around 9 billion by 2050. So there's a big target in front of us, and one side, we have seen the climate change, global warming, greenhouse gases, and the temperatures are rising. 
ocean levels are rising, erratic rains, earthquakes, what not. So, every individual on this earth, we are facing challenges. And hunger, malnutrition, hidden hunger. So, these are the other side of the coin. So, this is a time to balance between the requirements of a human being at the same time protecting the our own global environment, our biosphere and the ecosphere. How to do that? So the global demand, as I mentioned, that is growing like anything. We need to produce at least 70% more of what we are producing by 2050 to cater the needs of our growing population. Is it possible? That means there is a lot of pressure on every inch of the soil, every centimeter of the earth. The one side, the arable land is decreasing from year to year because of, as I mentioned about the urbanization, industrialization, etc., etc. And on the other side, and we are losing the potential, what do you call, support of the soil to the crop ecosystem. But at the same time, we need to double the, our produce, our productivity. Is it possible? So therefore, these invisible friends of human beings are, you can say the plants are animals, they are the microbes. How these microbes helps the humanity? Of course, we know today what challenge is facing the globally, and we know what is happening because of the pandemics and the viral disease, COVID. And by and large, the humanity knows only the bad effects of microbes, but other side is the microbes are very essential for our life. Not only our life, but also for the every living organism on the planet. Maybe it may be a plant or an insect or an animal. The microbial associations with every living organism is essential to thrive. So one side, these are natural resources, how to safeguard them, and also how to improve farm productivity without compromising the quality and quantitative characters of our agriculture. So therefore, we are now going to talk about, address about this agriculture from the biological means. So all these years we were doing chemical agriculture and now the need to switch on to biological agriculture because of the pressure from the climate and contaminated environments and uh, so many pathogens, pests, which attacks our crops and losing on-farm as well as off-farm yields. So therefore, environmentally responsive farming methods, exploiting the beneficial microbes is the way forward. That means the balancing between the various features of the environment, especially the soil, like the physical, chemical, and the biological components. It's at a high time to maintain the balance between these. So because soil is the, the foundation for the growing crop, and very difficult, maybe the hydroponics, aeroponics, et cetera, et cetera, are there, but how much, not even 1% contribution to the humanity. 99.999% of what we eat today, what animals eat today, all from the soil. So therefore, we need to protect the physical, chemical, and biological properties of the soil to support the every living organism. So we lost, we lost, in fact, the good physical parameters, the factors of the soil, nutrients of the soil, and also the very important life in the soil also we lost because of uh, ruthless use of these various chemicals. So we need to restore and we need to bring back life and whatever all we have taken out, time to give back to the soil. So therefore the biological agriculture that is an integrated form of cultivation where the biological component 
cannot be forgettable. So, therefore, microbes are very important for the plant life, of course, for the humans also. And I would like to say here that we, the humans, consists of most bacterial cells, microbial cells than human cells. If our body has a billion cells, 90% of cells belongs to the microbes and 10% of the cells belongs to the human beings. That means we are more of microbial than human. I'm not talking in terms of the weight. I'm talking in terms of the number of the cells. So like in the case of plant, you will find the microbial associations everywhere you will find these microbes on the surface of the plant, inside the plant, and also the total rhizosphere occupied by the microbes. So therefore, all organs of the plant interact with microorganisms at a certain stage of their life cycle. That means we cannot see any life form without association of a microbe. Life form in the sense mostly we are talking about agriculture, and the crop plants. So these associations, that's what we call as plant microbe interactions, associations, actions, direct actions, indirect actions, whatever it may be. So they are not necessarily always negative. Yes, there are microbes which positively impact and helps in the crop productivity. So therefore, we need to introduce once again the missing microbes into the environment, especially the crop plant, crop land ecosystem. So what are those interactions? How they help farming and how to introduce and what are the technologies available? What are the strategies available? We will be talking. As I mentioned, these microbes, so we have three categories of microbes, viruses, bacteria, and fungi. At the same time, their functions, based on their functions, they also can be categorized under three. One is good microbe. They are essential for the plant life. They help the plant. The bad microbes, they harm the plants, and they are neutral. That means they take only the shelter or support of the plant Neither they cause harm to the plant, nor a benefit gives, it gives benefit to the plant. So they are neutral. So we have more of neutral kind, very few of what they call the uh, damaging microbes, and likewise, good microbes. So good microbes are really essential. And today, we can only isolate, characterize, 1% of all the microbes. If you take one spoonful of soil, you will find millions and millions of microbes. But all the microbes can be captured, cultured, no. So, so far our scientists achieved only 1% of the microbes, they can be cultured and the culture conditions are optimized. So those are very important microbes. Yes, we know various functions of these microbes right from nutrition, disease suppression, insect pest management, and also growth promotion. So these are the four areas of microbial benefits given to the plant. So we'll discuss in detail all these things. But uh, these microbes, there are so many kinds of microbes because soil is highly dynamic and these microbes are present in the air, soil, as well as in water. The microbes are almost ubiquitous in nature. They find everywhere and they have their own role to play. So are these microbes, they coexist with the plants and also they co-evolve along with the plants. That means plants and microbes, they co-evolve. So what kind of an association we see from the microbes or maybe the, from the plants? So in general, what happens? Plant, it synthesizes its food material using you know, the photosynthetic mechanisms and produces carbohydrates, 
and internally you can see the fat metabolism, protein metabolism, carbohydrate metabolism, and whatever all utilized by the plant, they utilize the energy, and finally whatever all the the secondary things it excretes or evaporates, loses through the stomatal pores present on the surface of the leaves, or also released into the soil as an exudate. So when they, that means the leaf surface, something comes out and also from the roots, something also comes out into the soil. So they determine these exudates, the populations around the root zone. So these are root exudates. That means the compounds which are released by the plant, roots, they're called root exudates. They shape the soil microbial community. So every plant releases a different kind of exudates, not one kind. Every genus, every species, they, they have their own metabolites released into the soil. They may be a small molecule or maybe the proteins or enzymes or new, uh, amino acids or maybe the uh, minerals. So they attract a set of microbes. They associate with the plant root system in three ways. One is free living. They simply live in the soil and support the plant. They associate with the plant root system and they also enter into the plant root system as a symbiont. So free living, associated and symbiotic. So the, this density of these microbes in the rhizosphere is 100 times greater than that in the bulk soil. Because rhizosphere, that is the zone around the root system, is highly dynamic, active, and also a complex in nature. So now coming to microbiome. What is this? Why now people are talking about the microbiomes? We know last several years, maybe four or five decades, use of these microbes in agriculture for nitrogen fixation and phosphate solubilization especially rhizobiums, azotobacter, azospherulum, phosphate solubilizing microbes, either bacteria or fungi. These are being used as a soil application as seed treatment. We used to talk about only single organisms, like an organism which fix atmospheric nitrogen, or an organism which talks about being, uh, uh, solubilizes the uh, phosphorus in the soil. But now we are talking about the holistic nature of these microbes. So I would like to give a just definition of this microbiome. As I mentioned, in plants, the microbes are associated with every part. The leaves on the surface of the plant, the leaves on the surface of the roots, and also the leaves inside the plant. All those microbes associated with the plant collectively called as microbiome. Likewise, in humans, if you compare, as I told you, we are more of microbial than human in terms of the number of the cells. Microbes are found on the skin surface. Microbes are found in our mouth, nose, ears, and also in our stomach, gut. So nowadays, scientists are coming up with the novel probiotics, which can influence human metabolism. Human gut also called as second brain. And without these microbes, we cannot digest our food. Microbes governs all our physiological biochemical activities, including our mood swings and to disease tolerance. So because of our dietary habits, and processed foods, lifestyle. So we are losing very essential microorganisms from our gut. Therefore, the humans are now getting so many kinds of diseases. Now new therapeutics are in, coming up. Maybe in next decade, we will see 15 to 20% of the regular therapeutic drugs will be replaced by the microbiomes. Now we are talking about the fecal transplantation. The healthy persons, the fecal consists of fecal matter consists of the super microbes 
which are very essential for human physiological and biochemical activities. Such kind of a fecal transplantation is also now scientists are doing it. Likewise, even in the plants and the crops where you can also do the soil transplantation or maybe the optimization of the rhizosphere with the novel microbes and so on and so forth. So therefore, these microbes, you cannot see a, a plant life without association or a human life without association of the microbes. Therefore, these microbes associated with any plant or animal or insect is also called as a second genome or extended genome of the plants or animals. So therefore, now the definition, the set of microorganisms of a particular habitat collectively called as microbiome. Hope I have set the stage for the microbiome and its understanding and how to manipulate and engineer microbiomes to use in our day-to-day -day agriculture. Yes, I mentioned about the microbiomes. Yes, habitats. These microbes or microbiomes are present in the terrestrial, aquatic, aerial, human, animal, insect, plant microbiomes. Whenever within the plant, we can also call as leaf surface, leaf pilosphere microbiome. Rhizosphere microbiome, endophytic microbiomes. That means, likewise, as I told you, gut microbiome, skin microbiome, eye microbiome, nose microbiome. So these microbiomes are attaining the very prominent in therapeutics, human therapeutics. So likewise, we can say that very important, going to play a major role in sustainable, productive, safe, agriculture. So I have already defined what is microbiome and this microbiome is composed of several kinds of microbes. Mostly we are talking about the beneficial and useful microbes and they help in plant growth and also support the plant health. So the way forward is how to manipulate these microbiomes through various available techniques. So here there are two, one is two, uh, what do you call, uh, microbiome factors. One is core microbiome and baseline microbiome. I have already explained about every plant produces exudates into the soil. Those exudates determines what kind of microbes to be attracted towards the rhizosphere. In another way, we can say that each plant recruits their own microbial communities. Recruits or appoints or whatever it may be. That means selection. The selection is based on the plant, its genetics and its metabolites and its exudates. So this is the novel area we are now talking about the recruitment of microbes by the plant. Therefore, you, you see a different microbes in rice rhizosphere, different microbes in wheat by rhizosphere, they may not be same. Definitely there will be common microbes, common microbiomes, but at the same time, very specific microbes to specific crop plant. So therefore now we have actually, our company has initiated microbiome, crop microbiome initiative, where we are trying to understand the microbiomes of individual crops from the length and breadth of the country. So what are the essential microbes required for the plant survival and the productivity? And what are there today? Today, because of the monocropping, loss of biodiversity, and a lack of nutrient components, lack of organic carbon in the soil, and deposition of various chemicals in the cropland soils, all these things are all detrimental to the microbial life. Therefore, we lost, once again, microbial diversity. So today, if you go to any cropland, take the soil samples. Unfortunately, we are only talking about the soil health cards, only in terms of soil nutrients and physical properties. We are not talking about the soil life and soil microbial populations. Therefore, it is very essential to look at soil health in terms of the presence of good microbes. So today, if you look at 
what should be the good microbiome and what is there now in our crop lands. So therefore, the, you must understand the baseline microbiome and also what should be the core microbiome. So therefore, based on that, you can have the data and you can diagnose and missing microbes you can introduce. That is what we call as microbiome optimization or microbiome engineering. Yeah, this already mentioned, the millions of microbes inhabit uh, what you call uh, plants. They present in the seed, inside the seed. That means seed while, you know, the F1 generations from parent to offspring, how the seeds carry the genetics. Likewise, the seeds also carry microbes, the parallel genetics it is. So the seeds carry microbes along with it. That means they pack their own microbes while seeds set in. So therefore, if you cut open and place it on the nutrient media, you will find seed endophytes. So likewise, philoplane, rhizoplane, endosphere, insect microbiomes, and the free living microbes in the soil. These are all the various microbial communities helps every crop plant. So what are the gap? So what happened today and how to rectify, how to fill these gaps? So I mentioned about the seed microbiome, soil and root microbiomes, and the rhizosphere, very dynamic in nature, the philoplane microbiome, that means the microbes survives on the leaf surface, and the endomicrobiome, the microbes which lives inside the plant tissues, they play greater role in terms of growth promotion and phytostimulations and biofertilizations. So there are several, several the molecular and biochemical metabolic activities supported by these microbiomes. And likewise, insect microbiome, the famous the Bt, Bacillus thuringiensis, it is a bacteria which kills the insects naturally. So this particular bacterial endotoxin gene is introduced into the Bt cotton plant. Now we have the Bt. So therefore, the bacteria which kills the insects, likewise a virus which kills insect, fungal strains which kills the insect, the nematodes which kills the insect, bionematicides, biofungicides, bioinsecticides, all these are collectively called as entomopathogens. So the insect microbiome is also very, very, very important. So now coming to how to manipulate these microbes. So this has a schematic representation and engineering the microbiomes. And as I mentioned, these microbes, you can isolate either from individual plants, either from the leaf surface or in leaf tissues or stem tissues or on the root tissues, root surfaces or the soil surrounding the root zone. So these microbes can be isolated and characterized. So physical, physiological, biochemical characterization you can do with these microbes. So these microbes, which are adapted to the various environments. We see microbes in the desert ecosystem. We see microbes in aquatic ecosystem. We see microbes survives in the saline soils. We see microbes survives in oil spills, industrial sludges, and the typical very toxic environments. And of course, on the dead decaying organic matter. So that means you will find a great array of microbes in different, different ecological niches. So you not only isolate and characterize microbes from the cropland ecosystem, but also from ecological niches. So you can bring these microbes or bring these soils or maybe the leaf tissues to the lab and start isolating and characterizing, studying these microbes at the various levels using the soft toolbox, what we call as microbiome toolbox. This toolbox consists of all omics, phenomics, 
the morphological and the biochemical and physiological features if you study that comes under phenomics then metabolomics the signal molecules hormones produced by these microbes and the interaction between the microbe and the plant this all called as metabolomics genomics dna sequencing and also the mapping of the various kinds of uh, genetic products proteomics study of proteins Enomics elements, transcriptomics, that is RNA sequencing and expression. That means you can literally scan, study each and every activity of a microbe using microbiome toolbox, which consists of all the technologies, techniques right now available. This was not the case 10 years back. Now the science is evolving and you have all these tools handy you can study and you can pinpoint this particular microbe. Does this function help plant in such a way that it can be integrated into the plant metabolic system? So there are several strategies I was mentioning. How to incorporate these novel microbiomes? And I have a, another slide where I will show you the schematic representation of microbiome engineering. Yeah. So now we were talking about the microbes. These microbes are ubiquitous in nature. They are present everywhere. And the only thing is you have to catch hold of a good microbe, which can support the plant. I told you these microbes can be from any ecological niche and also from the cropland ecosystem. If you are talking about, say, rice, rice is a water-loving crop. Sometimes the drought happens. Drought in the sense, lack of moisture, lack of water. Then how to control, how to mitigate this abiotic stress, that is the drought. So for that, you can have a handful of microbes which can alleviate this drought conditions, which can help, which can mitigate drought situations of the crop. So I will explain how it is later. So you have microbes from a diverse conditions and also microbes from the crop rhizosphere and where you have fully characterized functional microbial bank. That means you have a bank. In that bank, thousands, millions, of microbes, well characterized in terms of their functional fitness to incorporate into the plant. Suppose say a plant that is under drought stress. What happens once there is a drought stress? When there is a drought stress, automatically the wilting happens, drooping happens, and finally, ultimately, plant die because loose of this terminal pressure inside the cells. Then what happens? So ultimately, farmers will be losing the crop. Then we have today microbes which can support the plant life even during drought situations. Microbes which produces polysaccharides, which stores the moisture. Microbes which induces, produces hormones and induces root system deep root system so that area of absorption increases. And the microbes which triggers the stomatal closure, therefore it stops the transpiration. And the microbes which produces a set of volatile compounds. So all these microbes finally supports the plant life. So therefore you can optimize this plant rhizosphere either through seed treatment soil application or foliar spray and make the plant life more tolerant to the situations. What are those situations? So those situations are different kind of situations where you can see water stress, salt stress, growth and development, nutrient uptake, weed control, control of insect pests, and phytopathogen control. So this is the 
a product portfolio using microbiomes. So that means if you have a microbe which cull, kills the insect pest, as I already mentioned, entomopathogens, soil pathogens, soil insects so like termites, nematodes, root grubs, these can be controlled using entomopathogens. Likewise, soil borne diseases like pythium, rhizotonia, that means uh, root rot, damping up, dieback, wilt, all these things can be controlled using the useful microbes. Like so weeds, uh, weeds can be controlled using the microbial metabolites, and a plant can be supported using these microbes to avoid drought stress or salt stress. And these microbes produces a growth promoting substances which induces growth as well as the root formation. And also the classical examples we know, the nutrients supplied to the plant, atmospheric nitrogen can be fixed and supplied to the plant, and the phosphate can be solubilized in the soil and supplied to the plant. And apart from that, now we have several other microbes, zinc solubilizer, potassium mobilizers, so like that. So that means every activity of the plant, abiotic and biotic factors can be controlled using microbes. Literally, we have alternative for every agrochemical. Name it as a fungicide, we have biofungicide. Insecticide, we have bioinsecticides. Weedicides, we have bioweedicides. So likewise, and also the chemical fertilizer in place of it, we have the biological and organic fertilizers. So therefore, it's a time to understand the microbiome concept and start commercializing this while understanding the plant needs. So that is a core microbiome and also baseline microbiome, definitely you can revitalize the Indian agriculture by imparting microbiome techniques. These techniques collectively we call as microbiome engineering. So this has two phases. One is a proof of concept that is the research phase and then application and then commercialization. So this has different parts. So likewise, as I mentioned, it's a kind of a chain reaction. The first one is, what is our target? What is the problem you are targeting? Which crop? What is the problem? Insect problem, disease problem, nutrient problem, growth problem. So identify the problem and identify the suitable microbe which can control, which can help to come out of this problem. So that's all in the proof of concept where isolations, characterizations, and the functional study of these microbes, and followed by the product development. This can be used by the farmers. Therefore, you require to develop a user-friendly product that should go hand-to-hand -hand with a farmer's farming practices. So therefore, a delivery system, it can be seed treatment or soil applications, drenching, drip irrigation, or foliage. So that is a delivery system that is a very critical to develop and understand. So this is the total functional and essential microbes from field to shelf. That means from the field, you get these microbes to the lab and you develop a product and give it back to the farmers through stakeholders. And finally, these microbes all together, we call them as AIMS, A-I-M, agriculturally important microbes. So this has enormous, tremendous scope for commercialization and every activity can be made a business vertical. I think we have a lot of maybe uh, prospective uh, students here, maybe scientists and also the business communities must be listening. Every aspect, as I mentioned about abiotic stress, biotic stress, within the biotic stress, virus control, bacterial control, fungal control, insect control, sucking pest control, uh, chewing pest control, likewise abiotic factors like uh, the nutrient deficiencies, then a drought and salt stress, everyone is a business vertical. Every business vertical can be dealt using unique microbes. 
And finally, these microbes can be converted into a delivery system, as I mentioned about the liquids, powders, granules, gels, capsules, tablets, injections. You know, now the injections are available in the trees, of course. A lot of people are already using, especially for the tree crops, where a, a, a microbial concoction can be uh, given injection to the plant. Therefore, that will, that means as endophyte, that will lodge inside the plant and start helping the plant. So, altogether, the microbiome can be converted into a business. And this is the final philosophy of the microbiome business. All plants in all environments depends on microbes. And therefore, potentially all crops, no matter where they are grown, could benefit from optimization of their microbial partners. Therefore, students and audience, there is a huge scope for the microbial manipulations, converting into a product and converting in an opportunity, business opportunity. Therefore, every problem in agriculture can be a, a business vertical and the reduction of inputs of each segment. I mentioned already every segment, weed management, insect management, disease management, nutrient management, stress, abiotic stress management. That means every business vertical you can tackle now with the microbes, especially consortium. Those days have gone where we are employing only single microbes. Today, it is a consortium approach where we will be having a handful of microbes, which does a different, different kind of a function. And these microbes, the challenge is making a product or a delivery system. So therefore, you can employ these microbiomes and as a alternate for chemical agriculture without compromising the quantity to under qualitative. And the market size, the huge market size, and of course, India still it's in the nascent stage. The elsewhere, it is growing like a CAGR of from 14 to 16% agricultural microbes. Six billion turnover is going happening. The sales are happening across the globe and that will go up to 11.6 billion by 2025. That means you see the outward jump from six to 12% almost, that is a 100% jump in the next five years. Not even five years, it's a four and a half year. Therefore, you can accept it as a challenge and start investing your time and money in microbiome business. And in this case, you have seed treatment sector, soil treatment sector, and foliar segments, the nutrition, disease, insect pest management, whatnot. And finally, but everything should go through a process and stakeholders. So it is a one second investment is high. Therefore, the young entrepreneurs you may have tie up with the local agricultural universities or the state universities, and you can all start working on individual crops or crop-based problems for a particular solution. So therefore, academia, industry, collaboration is very, very critical nowadays. That is public-private partnership program. And all these products deemed to fit uh, through a regulatory approach. So we have today two regulatory bodies. One is Fertilizer Control Order, and another one is Insecticide Act. So all the microbes which falls under biostimulants, and biofertilizers comes under FCO and insect bioinsecticides under Insecticide Act. So therefore, those who are interested in this kind of a business must also understand not only the technical things, but also the regulatory aspects. So one should register a product with the state and central government to sell this product to the dealers and distributors. So, so these are the the various kinds of opportunities available. And ultimately, it's all boiled down to seed health, soil health, and foliar health. Seed priming, soil amendments, and as a foliar spray, all it consists of microbes. So this is all. Thank you so much.
Thank you so much, sir, for the precious time you took from your busy schedule. I hope everybody has learned many new ideas and prospects for, prospects for future endeavors. Now we have an open session for question and answers. So, sir, moving ahead, the first question, how do we explain biostimulants and its benefit to drive its adoption by farmers and small scale agripreneurs? The question by Harshit Pandey. Yeah. So biostimulant, the definition is uh, different from biofertilizers and biopesticides. So biostimulants, they will have indirect effect on the plant. It's not direct effect. Indirectly, that helps the plant. These biostimulants can be two categories. The one is organic biostimulant, and the second one is microbial biostimulants. Organic, in the sense, they are all derived from the living sources. It may be a plant, or maybe the insect, or a microbe. It can be amino acids. It can be uh, seaweed extracts, and it can be a humic acids. All these are all now categorized under biostimulant. The second one is microbial biostimulants, which I have listed so many activities. So unless until those microbes, which fixes a quantity of nitrogen, quantity of phosphorus, and otherwise they are called as biostimulants, like triggering the stress mechanisms, abiotic stress control, and salt stress control, and the production of uh, hormones. So all these are all indirect actions. So therefore, the microbial biostimulants and organic biostimulants, together it's all on the biostimulants. It is a new act which was enforced on uh, uh, February of this year. So that will take another two years to implement practically. So these biostimulants are very important. They become very integral part of crop management nowadays. The farmers are using these biostimulants, especially organic and microbial, last several years. So now this is a new act which governs the quality, usage, dosage of these biostimulants by the farming community. That is, now it is much regulated. So definitely they are helpful to the plants, especially in terms of uh, drought mitigation, that means abiotic stress management, and also growth and nutrient uptake. Okay, sir. Uh, moving ahead with the second question, Akriti wanted to know what affects the evaluation of microbes the most. Pardon? What affects the evaluation of microbes the most? Evolution or evaluation? See, sir, evolution. It's evaluation. evaluation. See, how do you evaluate a microbe? I think precisely that is the question. See, evaluation I have mentioned. First of all, what you understand the purpose of the microbe. Every microbe, on, every microbe is not an equal. Every microbe has its own specific functions. There are maybe generic functions and also specific functions. As I mentioned, some microbes produces phytohormones. Some microbes produces organic acids. Some microbes produces enzymes. Some microbes it triggers the immunity of the plant. Some microbes produce force. Some microbes help in uptake of the nutrients. Some microbes fix atmospheric nitrogen. There are different functions and there are specific methods to evaluate. I mentioned the omics. The omics are the platform where you can evaluate every microbe molecularly, physically, physiologically, biochemically. Methods are available now. Sir, uh, Jyotsina wanted to know how to recover soil microbes that are depleting day by day by using fertilizers. Uh, are these cheaper to farmers? Yes. See, today at least we have the forest ecosystem, the forest to cover where the soil is intact, where you will find rich biodiversity. I don't think you will not get all the useful microbes in nowadays cropland ecosystem, unless until, unless until somebody grows organically, somebody maintains the biodiversity in the crop ecosystem. That is not, we, I don't call it as a crop. It is a natural ecosystem, natural farming, organic farming, where you will definitely find good microbes because the soil is low tillage soils, or maybe you'll, you will find different kinds of crops in the same place. 
and also you don't use any chemicals and you promote kind of a mulching and also you add organic manure that will improve the soil uh, microbial flora so therefore definitely you will get good microbes from such habits and habitats apart from that good microbes are also available in the government institutions icr institutions and also with imtech and at the same time from different ecological niches as i mentioned okay sir therefore the restoration of the soil is critical nowadays you need to reintroduce missing microbes into the cropland ecosystem yeah so there is one question that how to get registration from fco for biostimulant manufacture is microbial yeah. biostimulant a good venture and profitable yes if you look at fco or department of agriculture government of india website you will find the gadget publications recently 23rd february the gadget publication is available and afterwards also series of publications where they have set certain rules and regulations for these biostimulants and then first and foremost there are some seven or eight categories of biostimulants as i mentioned microbial extract living organism seaweeds amino acids uh, humic acid these are all the products but there are two or three critical studies every product biostimulant you manufacture that should be tested by an agriculture university on crops for two seasons that is of point 1 point 2 is you should also test this your formulation or a biostimulant product for its toxicology then third one is the shelf life standard procedures are available and the notification is there guidelines are there All right. So, so sir, now moving ahead, it's a time for Sayonara. I, on behalf of whole Just Agriculture team present here today, extend a very hearty vote of thanks. A big thanks to you, sir, and Dr. Sanjay Swami, sir, for the informational session, which is the need of the hour. I'm sure all who are present here will have a lot of takeaway from this session. I hope that everybody will try to cultivate the advice given by both of you. I extend my thanks to our organizing technical team for his enormous cooperation in the organization of this session and special thanks to Mr. DPS Badwal sir, organizer of the evening and all the other attendees and members for attending this session. Thank you. All men all leave the session. Thank you sir. Thank you all all the best to all the participants thank you